The Gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through to 11. Praise and glory to God. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up into their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. As this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord, sorry, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to Christ the Lord. Please be seated. God, we thank you for your word. Father, by your word, would you be made known to us in our hearts this morning. Amen. Karen from York, welcome. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. To those of you who are visiting with us today, welcome. You may notice the barbecue set up outside. That's what we do every Sunday. (laughs) And it would be wonderful to have you join with us following this service. Just a note, the food that's generally for the cup of tea is there alongside the barbecue. So try and hold off from the sweet stuff till you've eaten. That's the message from the ladies. It's nearly two and a half years I was aware of a profile that this parish had placed with the Auckland Diocese searching for a new vicar. I heard God say to me that I was to apply for your position. I didn't really want to leave where I was. And so not really concerned, I did what I trusted God said to do. I didn't tell my wife. Eventually I would receive a response back included as one of the applying candidates for this position as your vicar. It was that time that I told my wife. I didn't tell her because she had enough on her plate She was in the middle of chemo and that was enough. Well, that's my excuse. So I head to Auckland for an interview that I really wasn't prepared for. 
sit in a room where I'm told that my wife can't come with me. Of course, you know I took her with me. I was asked a series of questions that I really didn't have answers for. Part of that was simply because I didn't want the position, I didn't want to leave where I was, but I knew God was telling me to apply. Of course, you know the result of that, and I was appointed as your vicar, hesitant but trusting in my God, your God. It was some years ago that I presided over the wedding of my daughter and her husband at St. Peter's Cathedral in Hamilton. The past few weeks I heard from my children that my daughter was applying for a divorce. We have a son who is at university and it, it costs us some $300 a week for him to be accommodated just to attend university. My wife has been keen to find work and each job she applied for was in Auckland. Every time the answer would be similar we would love to hire you, but the fact that you're going to commute from Thames is a hard one for us to accept. So, as a father, as a husband, I consider all these things that are before me, and I think to myself, perhaps, perhaps I need to look for a job in Auckland to be there for my daughter to accommodate a son who has to pay to live in accommodation to give my wife every opportunity to find a job. This morning's gospel parallels with the story of the Israelites in the wilderness where we find Jesus this morning. Forty days he fasts, forty years the Israelites wander. Satan tempts Jesus to eat bread that he could make from stones and the Israelites were offered the bread from heaven, manna. Jesus was invited to worship Satan so that he could inherit the earth and all that it had to offer. The Israelites were offered the same with their many gods except they accepted the offer. My daughter has become very inquisitive. Dad, she says now, would you choose a million dollars or a big house? Of course, for me, it would depend on the size of the big house, how many bedrooms, where it's located, does it have a swimming pool, is it deep, how many cars can fit in the garage, all of that. And yet that's what this gospel is doing to us this morning. You can have everything. Or you can hear from me. You see, this gospel teaches us three things about ourselves. Firstly, that we are born with a hole in our lives that can only be filled with a God. 
Secondly, that we were given an identity as sons and daughters. And thirdly, that God's a jealous God who only wants us to worship him. For you and for me this morning, you may be faced with the things that I've mentioned to you. In fact, for some of you, I know that you do. I was called to be here in Thames. I know that for sure. And so how am I expected to deal with the challenges that are before me if God has called me here? How do I provide for my family? How do I give them every opportunity and yet remain here? Likewise, God has placed a call on your shoulders and that call is the answer to the whole that exists in us we can choose the million dollars or choose the house that is God the house that we will not understand the value of until we get to know the house. And the reason we choose not to have God is because we don't know Him. It's easy, therefore, to choose everything else but God. Yet we hear Him say that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God called me to Thames, therefore everything that I will need, he has promised. And as hard as that is to say, I have to learn to trust a God. God saying the same thing to us. What challenges you? What is the bread that stands before you as a choice rather than the house that is God? That's what this gospel says to me this morning. that the whole that is in us can only be met by a God. And that's a hard one to fathom. But the only way that we will begin to understand that is if we start to talk about what comes with the house. The more we know about the house that is God, the less enticing the million dollars becomes. Like me, God has a call on your shoulders. Like me, it could be a struggle for you to understand the value and the depth and the need that is ours for that. But I do know this. I do know my God because he called me I can trust in that what is your bread 
What is your challenge? Here is a God that I want you to know that you can trust. A God who will meet those needs that can't be met, those needs that look impossible to be met. Right now it feels hard, but I know this for me and I know this for you. The more we get to know God, the more we begin to trust God. And then God can begin to meet those needs that are inherent in us that can't be met by any other means. Man cannot live by bread alone. That's the explanation from Scripture for us. But it can be met by every word that God has to say to us. Forty days is a long time to go without food. I've done it for three, and that was hard enough. This is hard. Life is challenging. But we have a God who is waiting for us to trust him, to call upon him. And his call is to offer us a solution to the hole that's inside of us. Whatever is our bread this morning, whatever is the thing that we look to for our support. There is a God who wants to fill that void in the only way possible. My prayer is for us in this year of 2020, but for you personally, to get to know your God, so that you can begin to trust in a God that you're getting to know, so you can trust him for the places where we generally look to for help, to the only place that can meet that need.